Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today it's Wii U Wednesday again, and I've got this little Y start for you that I got from Gearbest. G10 on one side of the handle, titanium alloy on the other, 440C stainless steel for the blade. Very stubby for a little guy. I'm enjoying this blade a fair bit. It's got some rough edges in some places, but it's got some really good things in others. If this would have been my first exposure to Y-Start, maybe I wouldn't be as keen on the brand as I am, and I'm still very keen on the brand. And uh, that's because this blade, at least my copy, has got one issue that's somewhat significant, but easy enough to fix. Comes with a leather pouch to carry, and the way I like to carry this knife is in the leather pouch, and then I hang it in my pocket, with this. And I showed this to you on Monday. You know, you slip that over your pocket. It slips over your edge of your pocket like that. I'm not sure what I can all get on the screen. You pull it out and you use it. And that way it's not at the very bottom of your pocket. Instead, it's very handy, easy to get at. You don't have to hunt through your stuff. That's especially because I tend to have a fair number of things in my pocket. I've probably got this, I've got some keys, Maybe have some change, a lighter perhaps, you know. So having it this way, you know, you can pull on it and you get it right out. And then you just pull your knife out of that and your knife is totally free, not encumbered by a bunch of keys or anything. And you can go ahead and use it all you want. And then when you're done, you just stick it back in your pouch and you're all done. And this is a, a one hand opening knife. No problem with that. It's got a thumb flipper there. I can't seem to get to use it very well. I don't know if that's me or a problem with the knife. I think it's probably a little bit of each because the detent is actually fairly strong to hold the knife in. And to overcome it with this, it just doesn't give you enough. You need a little bit more distance away from the pivot to get a good amount of pressure, you know. You need a little more distance from the fulcrum in order to get it to move and, you know, turn around. So there's a couple little things about this that, uh, might not be the best, but there's enough good about this that I'm going to give you a full review in case you want to buy one. I started carrying this thing when it still had the pocket clip on it, and I've taken the pocket clip off, as you can see. Pocket clip is right side only, and uh, it has this uh, milled out section that it sits in, and it's pretty well, and it's very functional. Uh, it also serves as a bit of an over-travel stop, so you don't push the uh, frame lock out too far. But it doesn't work in the pouch if you've got the pocket clip on. So I took it off, and I'm using it this way, and I like it this way. I'll show you pictures of it with the pocket clip on, and you know that'll be that. But for my rest of my review, I'm showing it to you without the pocket clip. Uh, this titanium alloy is a stone wash. That looks pretty good. They did a good job with it, as far as I'm concerned. And here we've got G10, pretty good traction on it. And you've got Y Start's name, brand name milled into there. And Y Start is also, if I can get it to look just right, you can see it on the blade right there. And it says Y Start. I like that minimalist kind of on the blade. I would like though, if they would have also put the steel type on the blade as well. 440C isn't any steel to sort of sniff at. It's a pretty good steel. You know, 30, 35 years ago, it was the premium steel, you know, so it's still a decent steel. It's a, I would call it a mid to higher end budget steel. And, uh, you know, just like 8CR13MOV is a higher end budget steel, even though it's Chinese. Uh, a lot of people don't want to give it any props because it is Chinese, but it is a relatively decent Chinese steel. The pouch before we get out of our into our way. This split ring did not come with it. I added that myself. So basically you get this pouch with this metal ring at the top, which is really good. I'm glad they didn't just punch a hole through there. This is much stronger this way. And they uh, imprinted Y start onto the leather there. That's um, an ink or something. It's not embossed into the leather. And then the stitching is okay. And you know, it's half decent leather. It's not great. It's not terrible. It is what it is. And as I said earlier, with the pocket clip on it, it just doesn't work. 
Um, I also left this ring on here. I put this on here myself as well because for a while, and I might do it again, I was carrying it like this. And just, you know, you pull it out of your pocket and you either unclip it and use it or often I just left it clipped on and I'd use it and then I'd put it away. Uh, both of which are reasonable ways to use it. So um, I'm still deciding if I want to take this off and use it just in the pouch or not. You might have your own way of carrying it and using it. And, you know, having these options is one of the pluses that I like about this knife. You have a number of different ways you can carry it. You can carry it with the pocket clip. You can take the pocket clip off and just drop it in your pocket. You can carry it with this pouch um, and you can carry it, you know, on a keychain. It's just so many ways because it's not that heavy and it's not that big. 440C has a Rockwell hardness of around 57 usually. We've got a blade style. I'm calling it a clip point because we've got a clip here and then another angle, another clip here, and then we've got swedges on there as well. So there you can see that styling. Flat grind, saber grind, and then you've got your micro bevel at the end. Nice sharpener's choil. You've got a hole here, a sort of oblong hole for opening the blade. And it's really easy to get your thumb in there to open it. It's not that easy to do it this way, but it works this way as well. Uh, it's sort of a, works much better with two hands than with one, but you know, it does work with one hand as well. It's just sometimes a little bit trickier to get it started. Um, it's not the easiest knife to deploy the blade on. Uh, that's one of the cons uh, on this knife. I, I wish it was easier to deploy the blade. I'm sure they could figure out something that they could have done to make it better to deploy the blade. This, this jimping up here is for that thumb way of deploying it. And I was successful once. There, I got it again. But, you know, that's a lot of work and it's very awkward and it's two hands. And it's just, it's just not working for me. And I think that it's a design problem and not a Jake problem right there. Uh, these studs here, um, I don't know why they put a little uh, slot in there so you could unscrew them. Sure, you might be able to unscrew them, put them back on, but without those there, you've got no blade stop. That's your blade stop. So you need those on there. So they're, they're not thumb studs for deploying the blade. Those are the stop pins. So yeah, we've got a back spacer, but it's a very small one. So it's very much like open pillar construction because you know, see it's open pillar but it's no pillar. It's just open backstop, <laughs> backspacer. It's an open backspacer construction. And that backspacer is G10 and has a little hole for that uh, lanyard hole. Uh, you're not going to fit 550 paracord through there, but uh, you might fit some thinner cordage through there. Well, of course you can fit. You're going to fit cordage through there that fits through the hole, <laughs> obviously. You've got uh, proprietary screws here. They're in a Y kind of design. And I've shown you in other instances that even at uh, Harbor Freight in the United States and at Princess Auto in Canada, you can get these custom security screws, uh, bits, I should say. And if you just file them flat, there's uh, three winged ones that fit and they're just fine. That being said, I took this apart in order to get you pictures of the bearings and stuff. And all I did was use two standard or two flat screwdrivers one on each side. They were very snug and hard to turn, so I put it in that small vise that I have so that I have two hands to unscrew this. It's very hard to open this up if you don't have something to hold this knife in place. I, you've, I gotta tell you that. It would have been impossible if I hadn't have used a vise to hold the knife. And then you've got this cutout here. It's kind of a weird shape. But, uh, you know, you get the cutout there in the G10 in order to get at that hole to, to deploy the blade. Traction's pretty good here. There's good uh, friction on there. So, you know, the knife stays in hand very well. Three finger grip and your thumb up here. Fairly thick blade. Very handy. I still call it a wee, wee knife. Usually I call a wee knife something that's got a two finger grip. But even three fingers, I'm going to leave this as a wee knife. Lock up very, very early on this one. And that's one of the other negatives. Very, very early. So early that I could push on the spine and close the knife. And that's a little bit dangerous. I took care of it by, you know, buffing and even filing a little bit on this face right here. Because it's got that lock face totally exposed. That's a really nifty thing about this knife if you need to adjust it. So all I did was file on here a little bit 
so that now when I close the knife or deploy the blade, I've got at least, you know, early lockup. And it's very early lockup, but at least it locks up reliably now. I also took it apart and I did what I have on my video where I talk about early lockup. You can watch that video. I'll put a link to that video up here in the corner right now. I've got an early lockup video and how to fix it. And I did those things to this one and now it's working quite well. So that's a thing that you can come over. I mean, get over. Uh, no blade play, ball bearings inside there. No blade play, you know, anywhere, you know, when it's open or when it's closed. Lineup is absolutely perfect when the blade's closed. That's great. And it's a very comfortable knife. Now let's get to the dimensions. Uh, the cutting edge, 4.8 centimeters, 1.9 inches. Blade length, 5.3 centimeters, 2.1 inches. Blade thickness, 2.8 millimeters, which is 0 0.11 inches. The thickness of the edge behind that final little bevel is 0.53 millimeters. That's 0 0.021 inches. That's right down the, uh, I want it to be half a millimeter on, you know, a small knife. So it's right in that ballpark. The uh, handle length. So that's the entire G10 length. And on this side, titanium. 7.2 centimeters, 2.8 inches. Grip area is the same size. The handle thickness is 0.9 centimeters, which is 0.35 inches. The total length when the knife is open is 12.6 centimeters, which is exactly five inches. It weighs only 1.2 ounces, 35 grams. Uh, I did weigh it without the pocket clip. With the pocket clip, it's like 33 grams. You know, it's still 1.2 ounces, maybe 1.25 or 27 or something. I didn't get the exact measurement because it's very light. If you count the uh, pocket, uh, sorry, the pouch as well, together it's 45 grams, uh, 1.6 ounces, not bad. Until Saturday, September the 2nd, 2017, the black version of this is on a sale, a flash sale at GearBest, $15.99 US or $20.21 Canadian. Uh, in the U.S., you got to pay $2.55 shipping. In Canada, you got to pay $3.27 shipping. And that's if you just buy one item. If you buy two items, you know, your shipping goes down. So you buy a few items, your shipping goes down. So that's a very small shipping fee for something to ship all the way from China to Canada or to the United States or to you know, Australia, someplace in Europe, you know, South Africa, wherever you are. That's not much to pay for shipping. I like why start. I, I think the price is a little bit high for the problems I found. But if you really like the styling, you know, and you want something this size and shape, those problems can be overcome. So the pros on this, I like that it comes very sharp. I like the, that it's a flat instead of a hollow grind. Um, the blade styling is, you know, very good. I just love this wedge and then the clip point right there. It's, it's really, really nice. Um, I like that you can use standard drivers, even though it is a proprietary screw here. Um, I like the good detent. I'll show it to you again. Just at the last little second there, it pulls it in and it holds it quite well. I like this leather pouch. It's a good option. Gives you more ways to carry it. Uh, cons, lockup is too early way too early on mine and even still it's a bit early um, i'm gonna let it wear for a while and if it doesn't start to wear down then i'm going to do some more work on this uh, edge right here and try to bring it down a little bit so that the lockup will come in just a little bit further to be a little more secure uh this flump thumb flipping thing here that's a con it doesn't work uh they shouldn't have made it that way um if they wanted to put a thumb flip around there, they need to make it in a way that works. Otherwise, it should have just rounded it off. You can't use the leather pouch if you've got the pocket clip on. You know, I would like to have the pocket clip stay on, even though I have the pocket, the pouch, because you never know. You might want to take it out of the pouch and then, you know, put it in a pocket at a later time. And you don't want to, you know, if you've taken it off, you might lose it if you're a guy like me. Or I might put it in with my other pocket clips and then I'm not going to be able to find exactly which one it is. Or I'll find it, but it's going to take me 15, 10, 15 minutes or whatever. Eh, I just wish they would have made it so it would have worked both ways.
without having to take anything off. Uh, it's not bad in the hand. It's very comfortable in the hand, so that's a good thing. Very easy to use. You can have a nice secure grip and use it very well. You can sneak up and uh, it's comfortable to use in this manner. You know, it's pretty sharp. Uh, let's take this one inch wide banding and it just zips right through it, no problem. And then if you want to cut it when you've got it down, see, so just with that tip, it just slices really, really well. Uh, let's do our paracord. We've got four layers of paracord here. And we zip through all of those. Whoop, dropped on the ground. And we can cut that paracord that way, or, you know, pushing straight down, we can cut it that way. Works quite well. It's sharp enough to cut this really thin light paper, not just copy paper, but this stuff. You know, no problem at all, cutting paper. It's a good knife. I'm enjoying it. It's small. The price is a little bit higher than I'd like it to be, but it's not crazy expensive. You've got your black, orange, and this color options, so you've got a few options. It's a nice little knife. What do you think of this knife? Would you buy one of these? Would you carry it? How would you carry it? Please leave your comments, your questions, anything in the uh, comment section. I really like those uh, interacting with you there. Thanks for subscribing, sharing this video with your friends. And remember, when you subscribe, click on that bell so that you will be notified of every video. And then YouTube will not unsubscribe you unscrupulously as they do sometimes. And uh, remember to always cut towards your chum. That's an old English word for friend, buddy, the other guy. Cut towards your chum, not your thumb.